What's up? I'm Mike, N2MAK. And if you got a small mast or you have challenges getting it up in a park, I've got the solution just for you. Stay tuned. All right, here it is. This is a speaker stand from Amazon Basics. Bought it off Amazon. Uh, I will certainly leave an affiliate link down below, which I get a small commission from, help support the channel. But I purchased this with my own money and I liked it so much, I purchased a second one and a couple of my friends have even purchased them too after seeing how I can use it. So uh, let me show you uh, why this I, I feel is a great way to uh, deploy antennas portably, um, why it's so versatile and how I think it can be helpful and maybe it's something you wanna add uh, to your kit for POTA, for SOTA, VHF contesting, or just testing antennas around the house. This is pretty much what it's gonna look like out of the box, obviously it packs down, but um, this is where things start to get real interesting. So right here, you got this pin or key, let's just take that out and we're gonna loosen the collar up but we're just going to take the center section all the way out and this stuff is always <laughs> so much more challenging to do one-handed but there you go this is hollow there's lots of holes marked for the pins there's a cap on the uh, end that would normally be facing out when you're using it as a speaker stand but where things get interesting is the diameter of this tube right here this is a perfect fit for three quarter inch PVC pipe, but also for some masts like this, some of the real common uh, masts that we see used for uh, Poda and Soda. So you got the Carbon 6 by Soda Beams, the uh, Poda 20 uh, from uh, Giga Parts, and then one of the budget uh, fishing rods. This is the uh, Gocher Gold Tight. So this is a uh, seven meter mast or a uh, fishing rod uh, there. All three of these will fit inside of there without any problem. Let me set the camera down and <laughs> get it set up another way and I'll show you how. All right, so again, back at it one-handed here. So I am putting the cap end down just for reference, okay? Now let's just set that in there and let that go all the way to the bottom. Um, there isn't anything underneath here, but these bolts go in enough so it'll stop anything from going all the way through. Um, but let's get one of the masts here. I'll start with the uh, gocher. And you'll see real quick and simple. Now there's going to be a lot I should actually extend it out so that it doesn't go all the way down. Hold on for a second, folks. The gocher, you can see it fits really well in there. Now that's going way all the way down in there. And we wanna take advantage of the height because if you measure from collar here down to the ground, that's four feet. So we can get an extra 48 inches or four feet on the mast. Let me show you how again. This time I'll set the camera up on the tripod so uh, you can see. Oh, there you are. Camera's down there now. So, let me show you the setup real quick. Uh, cap end, normally the top, we're gonna put that in as the bottom, loosen the collar, slide that down. The first hole, the first notch, we're just gonna put it right there, so it's right around there. And then we're gonna take the pin, just get it in, sometimes you gotta wiggle it a little bit. There it goes, and I've got the POTA 20 already extended. And I will say it does, this does help a little if you are <laughs> tall like I am, but you know, you don't need to be. And simply set it up, lift it up. And now we're gonna set this down. And the bottom of the POTA 20 is now here, four feet off the ground. And so that's gonna be 24 feet off from uh, from the base here, and uh, it's going to be good. There's a teeny bit of play, but not too much. All right, so let's give you an idea here. There we go, all the way up, 24 feet up. All right, it's it's pretty simple setup. 
Um, <laughs> it's as simple as just, you know, un undoing uh, two joints to extend the base of the tripod and loosen or tighten the collar and uh, stick your mast in and there you go. I, I think that this is a really good setup for using an NFET as a sloper. You could use it uh, with a di dipole and stuff. You're probably gonna wanna use, because of the coax, lighter weight coax, or make sure you have a, a lighter weight gauge wire. Um, again, but uh, but no, it's a real quick and easy way to uh, set it up without having to put any stakes in the ground. It's a big no-no in some parks. You don't need to put a wire or a rope in a tree. That's a no-no in some parks as well. Um, real simple way to just set this up anywhere, whether it's a deck, the park, you name it. And taking it down is <laughs> it's just, just as simple as just pull out your mask, just pull it out, and uh, there you go. Um, and let me just, I'll show you real quick, uh, a little close-up so you can see how easy and perfect this is. Uh, for the mass and then we'll check out how this works with three quarter inch PVC which is really cool too. All right I've lowered this a little bit more but the position of the pin hasn't changed it's still four feet off the ground so uh, doesn't really matter how much of this center tube uh, that you pull pull up or, or not it, if anything it's just going to add more support but it's it's a perfect fit there's just you know like a millimeter or two uh it's it's real good what you might want to do um depending on how you configure this uh just because this is metal and you know it's it's it has left lines and marks on on my mats especially the the pota 20. if you want to put just some tape like i don't know i'll use electrical tape painters tape just something just to prevent uh, the scuffs uh, but but yeah it's it's that simple but in addition to working with the smaller mass like the uh, carbon 6 the pota 20 and the gocher it will work with three quarter inch pvc let me show you all right so got some three quarter inch pvc and this is actually the reason i ended up purchasing the speaker stand because i noticed uh, a reviewer had commented that it fits PVC, uh, three quarter inch PVC really well. And I had a ton of this thanks to my buddy, uh, W2 MVP, who had a bunch of surplus um, that they were gonna get rid of at work and uh, asked if I'd hold on to it for him. And uh, he's let me use a bunch of it. Uh, still got a ton left and, and it makes for like a real simple, cheap, portable mast. And uh, it fits just as easy uh, there's a little bit more room um, but you'll see I got some holes drilled here and I'll show you a workaround that my buddy uh, Jeff kd 2 yao came up with but um this will fit three quarter inch PVC in there uh, which is really really handy so let me show you uh, what we got going on here so let me take this out set this up uh, another way and I'll show you how uh, I can eliminate some of that wobble and uh, prevent any other mass like a dipole or a Yagi from turning. Well, look at that. I love using this setup uh, for VHF dipoles. You can actually see, if you look, you'll see uh, some of the tape. And then I've even pre-drilled holes with uh, just some line there. And there's S-beaners at the end, uh, which are for two meters and then six meters. So. Uh, this is great, and just to give you a frame of reference too, height-wise, this is going to be close to uh, nine feet up. So, I mean, look, I can't, I can't even reach. So, it's definitely a good half a wavelength up for six meters. That's perfect uh, for a dipole. Now, this will rotate in the wind, even light breezes like now. It's it wants to rotate, and so. Simple fix, thanks to my buddy uh, Jeff Kitty 2 yio Drilled holes. So we're using this as that, that stop pin right there. That's the base of the PVC. And then we got holes uh, going all the way up. They don't always line up perfectly. It is what it is. <laughs> we're a bunch of amateurs. Uh, but this will keep 
the mast from uh, rotating. Now, if you do want to rotate it, because dipoles can be somewhat directional, uh, has can Yagi's, which I use this with my mobile beam six meter Yagi. You can just loosen that. That fell down a little bit uh, because I'm just using one hand, but you get the idea, folks. You can just loosen or tighten the collar and uh, swing the beam around. Another great use for it, and you might have seen this in the background earlier, that's the N9 TAX uh, 2 meter, 77 to meter uh, dual band uh, J pole. And I'm going to reach up to that feed point. <laughs> Let's see here, it is a little over eight feet up. Um, so it's probably another, I don't know, four feet or so. Uh, to the top. So that's that's definitely up there Again, there's the second uh, Speaker stand Again, we're using the uh, pin system uh, do, It probably doesn't matter as much if you're using a J-pole a vertical antenna has composed as opposed to you know Something that's going to be a beam or more directional instead of omnidirectional, but you get the idea that'll keep it from uh, blowing around and twisting the coax and it works great. Uh, the top of that is almost up to the gutters. So it should give you a rough estimate of what you can expect. And again, that's just the size of the PVC that I had. Um, if you have longer uh, PVC sections or you wanna add another, you can obviously just using the friction fit for a quick and dirty deployment. Uh, it's not the most uh, rigid and anything more than four or five feet is, is probably not the best, but Hey, that should give you an idea. A lot of great uses, you know, whether it's the masts, the PVC, putting up HF, VHF, UHF antennas, a lot of great options that you get with these tripods. And again, I can't uh, say it enough. You don't have to worry about guying it and putting stakes in the ground or using a spike mount. Uh, you don't need to worry about putting wires up in trees. Uh, really versatile and uh, cheap, simple, easy. Those are all things hams love. <laughs> all right, that'll do it. Hopefully you found this video uh, helpful, um, if not mildly amusing with all the innuendo. But in all seriousness, uh, the, the speaker stand by Amazon has been a really helpful uh, piece of gear in, in my kit for a lot of the portable operations I do, whether it's uh, testing out antennas, here at the house to setting up uh, portable in the field for HF for POTA activations or even doing uh, VHF roves during the uh, contest. Uh, it's come in real handy and it, it's got a lot of different uses too. I think for the price um, certainly makes it worthwhile. So again, hopefully this helps you find this interesting. If you did, by all means, please uh, you know, click like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, but here's where I could really use your help. So as I've mentioned before, I've had this tip over on me before. Granted, I did have a, uh, a six meter Yagi on there at one point, and then I had the elk antenna on another, and both were really windy days. Uh, so that's on me. Fortunately, it didn't cause any damage to the antennas or to the uh, speaker stand. But if you have some suggestions about ways that this could be weighted down. I think that there's like weighted sandbags or things like that that you can use for photography and stuff. By all means, any suggestions on how to keep this anchored, um, that'd be a real big help to me, but also to some of the viewers. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. I'm Mike, N2MAK, 73.